Greetings from my kitchen pulpit. I'm Karen Clymer here in Fletcher, Oklahoma, in southwest Oklahoma, and I need to get busy kneading bread for the master. I had everything go wrong that could go wrong, or no, not everything, but uh, the reason I'm late here, the bread had not risen double, and remember, last week I was doing it, uh, kneading my bread twice for the first time ever, and so it turned out terrific. I cannot believe the difference that it made, but the bread is so much stronger this second time around. But anyway, it wasn't double in the kind of time to do uh, when I usually do this, so I had to wait until and then just when I was entering everything in, just doing some copying and pasting to get this uh, the information there on the on the page there for, about what we were doing, the title today, and a little mess, a little bit more information about it, the text and all. Uh, it disappeared, and so I had to start all over again. Well, anyway, I thought, well, the bread is rising more. It's getting better. So here we are, without equivocation, is the title of our message today. And I just praise the Lord for His graciousness, His kindness, His privilege to minister today. I'm glad to be called to preach by the Lord Jesus Christ, saved at the age of eight years old. And I have no, I do not regret that at all, that I gave my life to Jesus. And I tell you, he is a great savior. All right. Without equivocation, the word equivocate, what do you think about? You know, you think, uh, have, and I read the meaning of it and I knew what it meant, but it said having a double signification, to use words of doubt, as, as, of doubtful signification, express one's opinions in terms which admit of different, different interpretations, specifically to use ambiguous expressions with a view to mislead. Prevaricate. When you think of somebody that they they equivocate, there's somebody that you you're leery to be around them because they're always weaseling. Is what I would say, and they'll use terms that you can tell they're just really not established what they're saying. You just don't trust them. People that begin they start out all gung ho when you're talking to them. Everything seems to be going well. Then you begin to ask some questions, especially if you're going to, if it's a business deal. And they begin to weasel. They begin to equivocate. And you, well, they say this word, well, well what that could mean. You know, you just don't trust them. Without equivocation, the Lord spoke this to me after we had had our message last, last Friday. Uh, equivoca equivocation. I said, okay, Lord, I'll work on that word. And so I begin to study and to pray. And I thought, what scripture could I use for that? And so uh, as I was studying praying today and, and seeking the Lord about the message. Here's what came. It was so good. I thought there's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. That is our text today. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 2 in the uh, that is in the New Living Translation, I believe, okay? And so we live in a day when there's a lot of confusion, when it abounds everywhere. But it's not uh, considered as such. It's considered love or enlightenment. And, you know, people don't want to uh, hurt anybody's feelings. So they just say, we love. And if you mention something uh, tell some, that needs to be corrected, you know, that's like it's a lack of love. Well, no, it's not. You love somebody when you tell them the truth. It may... Uh, be hurtful at first, but then you tell people the truth, it can really make a difference. But equivocate, no weaseling, misleading, lying, nor, not straightforward. Huh? You know, I thought, yeah, I don't like to deal with people like that. You can tell they're weaseling. I don't, want to, I don't want to deal with these people. Jesus was straightforward. That's what I love about him. He didn't tell you, it's going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be easy. Life's going to be fun and games. He never told us that. He let us know. It could be, be some difficult times. He put it out like it was. And I just thought as I've studied and I read God's Word, and I not see the character of God, and I see the character of those who love the Lord, and then those who did not, who started and didn't, didn't complete. I just said to it, it just came out of my mouth. I just said, I just, Lord, I said, I, I, just, I just want you to just put a, well, I, I just want to sizzle in my soul that I, to, to serve you, Lord, an excitement, a gladness, and a joy to serve you and, and, and to encourage others and to uh, 
just accept you. That's what I want others to do, accept you as Lord and Savior. No, it's a wonderful life. It isn't always easy, but I'll tell you what, we're going somewhere, and so it's worth any trouble that we might have. Looking, and what I did, I looked at it like this. Looking, looking, looking unto Jesus. And to me, it's a steadfast looking at Him. He's always said, as always, He's always spoke truth. He was not, He never equivocated. He told, He said what He meant and meant what He said. And when they asked questions, He was straightforward with them. Very plain. When somebody said, Well, I want to go and I, I, want, to, I want to live with you, I want to be with you. Well, uh, He was talking about, Where do you live and all? Well, he didn't, he didn't have this certain place. So he, I tell you what, wherever his father, the heavenly father, sent him, that's where he went. And so uh, Jesus is the door. and He's the only door. There is no other way. People will tell you, well, I know people that are very sincere, and I think they're going to him because they're very sincere, but they don't believe in Jesus. They don't even believe in Jesus. I tell you what, he is the door. He is the only door to eternal life. And what a privilege to tell others about him. So I want to say from there, looking, looking, looking unto Jesus, Jesus only. We're not going to be looking around at anybody else. And then the second thing we want to do is settle it in your heart. Believe and speak God's word without equivocation. Settle it in your heart that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm thankful for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I tell you what, being a part of the faithful remnant, that minority, yes, you will, we will be in the minority. You can mark that down. We will be in, in the minority. And are you disappointed in Christianity? Have you been serving the Lord and maybe you got disappointed in Christianity? Did you pursue the righteousness of Christ? That's what we want to do. When you totally, as we call it, sell out and yield ourselves to the Lord, that's the people that have a joy, even though they may go through some difficult things. I appreciate it that the Lord is with us during those times. So settle it in your hearts. I was thinking about an instance. Let's go to back in the Old Testament. There was 12 spies. We, we call, they, we, in the Bible, it calls them spies, and that is what the King James Version calls it. But what we would call them would be scouts. They went to send them out ahead of time because people said, well, the new land we've been promised we're a little bit leery about it. We don't know about it. And we just like to know some more. But then Joshua and Caleb said, but the Lord is going to take care of us. The Lord is going to lead us. And Moses is our leader. He had said that, but God would. But they said, well, I know you're saying God would help us. but And the Lord had. He, just, he was miraculous what he had done, how he had guided them in just wonderful ways you know, with a a, a pillar of fire at night when it was dark so they could see and then a cloud by day it was just he guided them and followed the cloud the Lord provided that but now these people were complaining and they were uh, and all, they were scared and they said we, we want to send we want to send some scouts out well so they pointed scouts from each of the tribes and Joshua and Caleb came back talking about how wonderful it was God's going to help us but you know there was ten of those spies they sent twelve and ten of those spies are the ones that said, Oh, I tell you, it is a great place as far as beautiful and all. And I mean, the crops are amazing like nothing we've ever seen. But they said, But you just cannot believe how big those people are there. They're giants. And said, They are so big, we're just like little grasshoppers in their sight. That really wasn't the case. The case was, and what they didn't realize, was that the people had heard how of God's miraculous ways he helped his people and so they were living in terror but these people then convinced their bad report convinced convinced the others and with Joshua and Caleb saying but God is great and he will help us look at what he's already done we can do it they would not believe they were filled with doubt but we need to believe and speak God's word without equivocation those people begin to equivocate. The ones that had seen it. Well, yeah, we know. Well, we saw what they said. Joshua and Caleb said, you know how God has helped us. And he could say to those fellows, we all saw it. You know it's a great land the Lord has promised us to give us. We can do it. And they said, we know it's beautiful and all. And here's the fruit. You can see it. It was huge. The fruit was beautiful. And it was, it was delicious. It was huge. It was what they needed. 
but they all listened to what those ten spies said. But not Joshua and Caleb would not be moved. You know why? They had settled it in their heart, and they did not equivocate, no matter what anyone else said. And you know, when it come time, the, their, what was sad was that all of those people that complained and all that whole generation lost their lives, and only was the young ones that would survive. What a horrible thing. Didn't have to be, but because of unbelief, because things were maybe going to be difficult, but they began to equivocate because they didn't trust God's word. Didn't trust God, not just the word. They didn't trust him, but he is faithful, and he had shown them how he would help them. But they, in their doubt, they lost out that day. And what happened is it wound up that it took 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, just wandering around, going here and there, of course, the Lord was there. He was guiding. But those two men that said they, they would honor God, Moses didn't even get to go in because later on how he dis disobeyed the Lord. And one thing, he was told to speak to the rock for the water to come out. Instead, he, he smote the rock twice. He shouldn't have done that. But anyway, here with Joshua and Caleb gave a good report, and they stayed with it, and they kept that dream and that truth alive in their hearts. And 40 years later, they got to go in. To that promised land. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful a privilege that they had. The joy and honor it was to get to do that. And when what a great, glorious day. Wouldn't you love to have been there and seen those fellows when they headed out that day to go to, to they, they got to cross over. It was a wonderful time because they were faithful. And, you know, and they, they didn't get involved just like the, 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 the ten spies, or if you want to call them what they were appropriately uh, scouts is those scouts they what they didn't they didn't get involved in all of that complaining and they said well they acknowledged it but then those people were saying oh but you know look how the giants were there and they acknowledged there was giants there they said yes they, they didn't ignore the fact they were giants there but they said the Lord is going to help us he's going to give us the victory and you know that's what we have to do is to look at that instead of becoming entangled you know, our, our scripture I read said, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Second Timothy 2 and 4. What people, are, that what they were doing, when they were engaged in a battle, instead of looking to the Lord who had been so faithful, their commander, you know, uh, he had, here the Lord was in charge, and here he was, Moses was leading them, and God had led all the way. It was, they couldn't do it. But all that fear and doubt, None of them got to go in. Joshua and Caleb, who had been so faithful and so true. And, oh, I remember how that, that Joshua, when it came time to assign land, well, it was uh, Caleb told Joshua, he said, I was promised this piece of land here. Well, it was really probably one of the most difficult places where the giants were and all. But he said, give me this mountain. Give me my mountain. He, claimed, he never gave up, and the Lord blessed him. He even kept his energy up. He was, he was like, just like a, a young man, really. He won the victory. Just settle it in your heart to live for the Lord. And let's make honey. I thought then, let's make honey. The guard bees. I think of the importance of the guard bees. It's so important that truth is spoken by our leaders. And then, uh, But we need to, as even though we may, may not be leaders, we may, need to read God's word and know what it says and never equivocate. Be like Joshua and Caleb. You, they spoke truth. They didn't equi equivocate. They didn't deny that there was giants there. They were there, but they said God is greater. And guess what? God gave us his word, and we know his character. He said we can do it. They never equivocated. They never did. Let's make honey, guard bees, pastors and teachers. In the, in the, If you ever have an opportunity to... Uh, get the, the film about the the city of the bees. It's one of the most interesting films. I've mentioned it before uh, talking about this. Bees are some of the most uh, active. I mean, those little fellows, they work and uh, work so hard. And they're on high alert. The, the guard bee especially. Uh, they are still, I believe it's two guard bees there. And they are watching because they don't want any enemy coming in. And one of the most feared things is the wax moth. And it's just slightly larger. I mean, it looks almost identical to that honeybee. That guard bee, both guard bees have to watch it. You get a chance to watch that, that film. It's very, very interesting. I think you can you can still purchase that. You get it as a video. It's amazing to watch that, those guard bees. Because if that, if 
that wax moth ever gets in, I mean, they can literally, if they're not, if the try, if the uh, if that hive is not immediately treated, uh, they'll lose it. We we had one. My husband had one, had one, and they got wasn't able to get back and check on those bees. And unfortunately, uh, the wax moth got in there, and and it was most. He said one of the most filthy uh, looking things, and the odor was atrocious, because some way somehow a guard bee missed one of those bees getting in there. But we need to be on high alert. For, for the in our in our life, we can anything that's uh, speaking of, of uh, anything that borders on untruth in any way, or well, just to get along with people, this is what we need to do. No, we need to just speak truth to error, but do it in love and kindness. You know, the the, the honey bees they give their lives working to make nourishing honey, no equivocating. You know, they just are, they stay at it, and their lives are very short, just a, a few weeks, and and they're gone. You know, that's what our life is very short. Even if you live 100 years, that's like, there's nothing. I'm 75, and it doesn't seem like 75 years have gone by. Just so quickly. So we don't have much time to work. Well, let's work while we can. I've told the Lord I want to give my best as long as I can, all my life. As long I want to be as healthy as I can be. I want to take care of myself. I want to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. One last thing I want to mention. I was reading today. I thought of... That the Lord brought this to my mind. How that you remember how a glorious time in in chapter I believe it was chapter two of uh, let me get this no it was Acts chapter four and verse twenty nine and how that uh, the two fellows went up to Peter and John went to the, after they'd been filled with the Holy Spirit and how that they went to the the temple and they had seen this man no time over, no telling how many times over and again he was a crippled man and he was dependent on gifts. On, on gifts of money, people he couldn't go out and work. So they would. Then they what that day it was different. Now they'd seen that man. I'll tell him how many times. And when they walked up to him, he came up and he was waiting, hoping they would give him something. And then Peter and John they said to him, "You know what? Still, we don't have any money. We have silver and gold. We don't have. But what we do have, we're going to give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk." Wow. He didn't say, "Well, I got to check it out. I don't know." And neither did they say. Well, you know what? I know that Jesus healed. I don't know. I'm quite sure. I, I, I'm afraid to, to, to tell him he can be healed. They didn't, they didn't equivocate at all. Oh, they said, we just got this Holy Spirit dwelling in our life. We can do what Jesus did. That's what Jesus said to do. Greater things than these shall you do because I go to the Father. And I, you, you have access now. We have access. We do too. Not just Peter and John. But they said, rise up and walk, took him by the hand, and the man began to leap, he began to run, leap. he didn't even have to have a rehabilitation, think of that, he didn't have to have physical therapy, and it was amazing what, how when God healed him, made me think of us listening to Mario Morello tell about his dad, Morris Morello, how that he was in, and I believe it was in South America, and the Lord was healing people, and, and how that they actually arrested his dad, because said he, he, was, he was healing people uh, without, a, without a medical license. Well, it was Jesus doing. He was praying for them, and Jesus was healing them. I don't know how long he was in prison, but isn't that something? I don't think any of us have, have been charged with that, but we pray for somebody and they were healed. Praise the Lord, he's still. But you know what? They did not equivocate. They did not equivocate at all when they come and took them in, you know, the leader, the church leaders, and they didn't believe that Jesus was the Christ. And so they really jumped on their case, and they tore them up and told them how, as far as with words, they tore them up and told them how awful they were and to stop it. Said, you stop, and they got together and said, everybody's believing this stuff. We've got to stop them. And now I love it how that when they got together and with their, with their fellow uh, workers, their fellow Christians, and they said, this is how they prayed. They didn't say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, we, we, we messed up, Lord. We, we should have just been quiet. No, they didn't. What they said was, and now, oh, Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. That's what I say. Lord, give us great boldness to proclaim your wonderful word. That's Acts chapter 4, verse 29 in the New Living Translation. They didn't get all, they didn't get in and say, oh, we're going to have to tone it down. Uh, we're going to have to come at it another way. They didn't do that. No, they were bold. And now, oh Lord, hear their threats. Because they did threaten them. They were going to, it was going to be jail time. And said, give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word.
It wasn't their word. It was God's word. They just kept right on and how God blessed them. So that's what I, I trust that's in your heart today. To, that you want to just go forward with the Lord without equivocation. That the, you, you don't have to stumble around when somebody asks us something. We just boldly say, yes, we live for God. Do you believe? Do, do you believe in, in miracles and all? Yes. Have you seen miracles? Yes. We believe. And we treat. We want to seize the moment that we have and stand fast. This is our moment. Our moment. And God is still working and he's still wanting to use us. So let's let him. May the Lord bless you and keep you. We're so happy to have had you on. And it's some, this. I will go ahead later on today, maybe tonight, get this uploaded to YouTube, Rumble, and Twitter, now called X. And I did find out it was a, made an amazing difference. Last week was the first time I had needed my bread twice. I, like the instructions had always said twice, but I'd always done it once. It made the bread so much stronger, and it rose better. In fact, when I was putting it in the... And the bags, when I bagged them up into, into gallon bags, I could, I could hardly get it, get it closed. It had made such a difference. Very, very, very much different. I, but I'll do my best to maybe uh, see if I can get around leaving earlier next week uh, so we won't have to be a little later. Okay, you be blessed. We look forward to seeing you next Friday, the Lord willing. You have a blessed, blessed weekend.